Hey, are you thinking of moving to Rosemount? Do you like tree-lined streets and my local article in the newspaper? Well, then this video is exactly the one you need to pay attention to. Let's take a look. Hi there, my name is Chris Mosier. I'm the South Metro Realtor and one of the people on the Twin Cities Minnesota Living Team. We get messages every day from people just like you that are looking to move somewhere within the South Metro of the Twin Cities and we absolutely love it. So listen, whether you're planning a move in six days or 60, shoot us a message, drop us a line and let us know how we can help you and your family make a smooth move to anywhere here in the Twin Cities. All right guys, we're gonna look at three distinct properties throughout Rosemount today. The idea being to kind of give you a smorgasbord, very Midwestern term, of what different price points will afford you, what they look like, a bit about the actual neighborhoods and so on and so forth. So that'll give us kind of a chance to give you like a walking vlog of it. And then from there, kind of recap our findings in a way that makes all this make sense. So without any further ado, let's get out to property numero uno. All right, so our first stop today is actually a four bedroom, two bath, 2009 built split entry. You try memorizing that three times fast. Um, so this one I thought was like a perfect way to kind of start. It's close to Erickson Park. It's close to some of the aspects of like Rosemont High School and areas that are pretty well known and pretty desirable within Rosemont. Although there is a twist. Um, this is actually one of those rare single family homes that has an association along with it. Now, I say that because if you're watching this from other parts of the country, I know parts of Texas, I know big parts of Georgia, for example, you know, associations with single families are pretty well known. That's like not that outside of the norm. Here in Minnesota, it's kind of a rarity. I would even say that it makes up less than 2% of the overall inventory. While it's absolutely the standard with townhomes, for example, actual single families, we just don't have a lot of that here. Now, that may be a deal breaker for some of you, it's just something to weigh against the pros and cons. I mean, this one in particular covers almost all the exterior. They did the maintenance of the fence, snow removal, sanitation. So there's definitely some value wrapped in there. And at only $125 a month, that's not a crazy amount to spend. But for those of you that are like, hey, I don't want an association. I don't want the rules. I get it. Um, that being said, though, I mean, this one's been on the market for a couple of weeks as of the recording of this video. Um, I'm sure it plays a factor, you know, even at the price it's at now though, it comes in at roughly $182 a square foot has had some nice updates. It's got that ultra vinyl planking in the floor for the laminate and then like main level they've, they've upgraded the bathrooms. They, it looks like in the process of putting on a new deck. So, you know, to come in at an actual purchase price of like 375, I thought this was a good starting point because right now, our median home price across the Twin Cities in general is roughly three hundred ninety-two thousand. So, it's it's really we're we're getting to that point as a state and as a community where it's kind of getting harder to even find things that are you know under four hundred just just for starters. So, this one in particular was a good one to give you that opportunity. Let's go take a look at it. All right, so property number one. First thing you noticed, one level living, not a ton of light on this level, so we kind of shoot through it a little fast, but the kitchen is well laid out. It's got a deck out back, the granite countertops and the hardwood and the backsplash really help to make this shine, even though this is the least expensive one we're gonna look at today. Now, split entry design, pretty standard here in Minnesota. You come downstairs, you've got the main situation in the basement there got an additional updated tile bathroom which is nice as well but then you've got another set of stairs so this is called a multi-level split where you actually keep the rest of the uh, appliances and some of the furnishings and they were able to even squeeze in another bedroom down there which I found very surprising upstairs you've got three bedrooms on one level which is nice you can kind of see they sort of half moved out so you have to imagine some of this for yourself but again having an ensuite on the primary 
having some of the updates with the pass through, you know, all these little features tend to make this a little bit more livable for anybody who's trying to keep everything as close to their living space as possible. A lot of hoodies, a lot of shoes in this one too. <laughs> All right guys, stop number two today. I'm sitting outside in front of the Jeronim Pond, and believe me, nobody knows how to say that correctly. Uh, development, there is a late 90s, 1998 built, three bedroom, three bath. It's just at four, it's 449.9. Like, come on, gift of retail, it's, it's 450. But um, with about 2,400 square feet, this one also comes right in, very close to the last one. It comes in at just roughly $185 a foot. And you now this one's only a three bedroom, but it's got a third bath. Now this type of layout, I also thought was worthwhile to showcase. Not only does it get us into like, you know, the next price bracket, but this layout is actually very unique. I've, I don't see these as much in other states. And even in Minnesota, it's one of the more rare styles of homes we build, but it's considered a four or more, depending on how many levels there, there can be, level split entry. Now, why that's significant is our standard split entry or bi-level for you Dakotans that are watching, uh, those typically are built in such a fashion that you open up the front door, there's maybe a small landing pad, maybe a, clo a coat closet of some kind, but you're pretty much forced to make a decision. Up or down, the step's right there, you know, it, it kind of feels like almost like that part of the house isn't really the open entry. It's just getting into it. So with these, what's a little different is you go in and it kind of feels like a one level. Like you've got everything right there. You've got a separate bedroom to the side. And then you'll go in and you've got the, the deck off the kitchen. You've got the kitchen area. But then it's got like the sunken family room that then also goes down like another couple of steps to another level, another level underneath that. And then same thing going up. So again, just for differentiation, show you guys what, you know, some of the, the previously built versus some of the newer ones look. This one's also on the west side of three, which is an important dividing line between what's called like the east and west sides of Rosemount. Now, as you're gonna hear more in the next home that I talk about, and just in general throughout this video, Rosemount specifically has been exploding. It has been growing particularly on the east side of three because that's where that's where the available land is. That's where a lot of it has sat. It's just open vacant space, open farmland for a number of years. Then now they're building a lot of new construction. They're putting more things in. So there's nothing wrong with that. But for those that are trying to stay more on the west side of things, maybe get closer proximity to County Road 42 and be closer to Apple Valley or Egan, for some, that can be the deal maker or breaker. So definitely with this particular property, it's another little boost, it's another little credential that we should speak about. But talk all day, let's go look at the house. All right, so property number two, we're dealing with another split entry design here. This one is a little bit more traditional in its split entry, but it does have more space in the basement. You've got the upgraded vinyl plank for lowering. You've got the stackable washer dryer, but there's a real proper family room here in the basement, along with a couple of the bedrooms that are down there as well with lookouts to the backyard. So some of these features, again, very typical of Minnesota, very typical of these price points. Not everybody's a fan of split entries, but they're a big part of the types of housing we have out here. And as long as it's not a total deal breaker for some of the people that like them, these are how they make them a little bit more um, habitable. Now, having an island on the main level, having a sectioned off portion of it for the family room and the TV and everything else, updating the countertops, updating the backsplash, all these sorts of features, I think are how these become a little bit more appealing. This particular property is still waiting to finish out its deck, but again, everything's kind of flowy. Everything's very well lit for the most part. And again, it has the ensuite access from the master. Now. The other drawback here is that it's a shared uh, bathroom suite. So there is no privacy per se on this one, which kind of makes this more of a starter home. All right, guys. Well, last but not least, we have the more updated. It's a 2020 built one story. It's a three bedroom, three bath with about 2739 square feet. And at 570,000, 
It is the most expensive dollar per square foot as well. That comes in at roughly $208 a square foot. Now, again, this one in particular, I've made this crate, I've made this critique of some of the other areas. Like when I talk about Lakeville, like I'm actively doing this for my parents right now. They're in their 70s, they're looking to downsize, trying to find good amounts of one level living is surprisingly difficult across the South Metro for reasons that I can't fully explain logically. They're building more of the retirement community rentals. They're building more like senior apartments. But to find places that are just even one level living where you can continue to be until maybe in your 80s or beyond, um, there's not a lot of. And it's kind of a mixed bag as to like finding it. So this one in particular I thought was a nice addition because it's only three years old. A lot of people don't know is that, so you're past the one and the two year warranties, but you still have seven years left. Anytime, uh, almost almost every home that's built here in Minnesota comes with what's called a one to 10 warranty. I'll get in that more deeper detail in a future video, but what's nice is if that homeowner sells that home prior to one of those being expired, it transfers with the property. So one like this, you'd have an extra seven years left for you know, foundational, uh, major structural, roofing, siding, things like that, that the builder already takes care of on their dime. So, but this in particular, like I said, only a three-year-old home. They put some decent amount of money into the flooring. They've got a nice wraparound composite deck, even a really well laid out uh, shed in the backyard. So definitely some features. You know, there are new builds in some of these neighborhoods that are starting at like 550, 560. But then when you, when you put in all the bells and whistles, you put in all the same features and upgrade the kitchen, you know, you're easily looking into the 600s. So definitely could be a nice feature for those that are looking for something that's just move in ready. And it obviously carries a higher likelihood that the home's in good shape. But like any good salesperson, don't take my word for it. Let's go get a look at it. All right, so right off the bat, you can tell that this is still brand new construction from the outside in, the very well laid out updated kitchen with the gas stove, matching stainless appliances, and the open floor plan on the main one level living. Even nice little brick that accents the gas fireplace there. Leads out to a composite decking that wraps around and steps down into the spacious backyard. On the main level master bedroom, we've got open space with an attached primary bathroom. And then again, more space throughout with the ensuite for both the second bathroom as well as the other space leading out to the side. This one's really got a good sense of air, good sense of flow as it walks through the his and her closet and the same level washer dryer. Nice updates with the granite countertops and the vinyl planking flooring. Headed into the basement, you've got a wonderful amount of abundant space that you can clearly see used to be a secondary video viewing room, movie room. This room in the basement that's an additional bedroom has been turned into a playroom. But I think the most hidden feature here is that you have an almost complete grandmother, godmother suite, whatever you want to call it, in the basement, including the oven, sink, refrigerator, the whole nine yards. So that makes a big difference. Upstairs, back on the main level again, you've got a bump out with a walkout three car garage. But really, it's the additional shed, which they matched all the vinyl, matched all the aesthetics to make this one of a kind and be just like the house. Well guys, thank you for making this journey with me today. I figured what fitting place to end in our tour of Rosemount than Central Park. Now I know, this probably looks nothing like what you're accustomed to with Joey and Chandler and friends, but this central park is, well, it's pretty central to the downtown parts of Rosemount. And again, anytime you get to be back in nature, you'll see that as one of the recurring themes because let's be real, it's the main way we catfish people into living here. If you don't enjoy nature, if you can't get out in it most times of the year, that six month brutal winter is not gonna be fun for you. So fortunately, as you'll be able to see through here as we wind down, Rosemont has this as well. And like I said, my big thing uh, I wanna recap for all of you is that I think this is probably of, of one of the main cities in Minnesota, but definitely 
the number one, probably fastest growing potential of anything in the South Metro. You know, with all the things you mentioned in the video, all the businesses that are coming, all the homes being built, the infrastructure, the schools, you know, right now at almost the same price of some of the surrounding towns, just a little bit less expensive than Lakeville, less expensive than Egan, and maybe a little bit better dollar per square foot in some areas of Farmington. But you give that five to 10 years, it's gonna rival those guys as well. So I think that's part of the upward potential that Rosemount still has. And one of the reasons I consider this probably the biggest hidden gem in all the South Metro. So if you found this to be useful, if there's something you guys want us to cover specifically, great, let me know. Cause I'm definitely gonna be out here hustling to get a few more of these done before the snow falls. I will still go out when the snow falls, but I probably won't be wearing my, my fancy realtor shirt. I'll probably have to bundle up. But again, we love getting the chance to serve you guys. I hope you find this stuff educational. I hope you find it useful. And in any way that we can continue to be a resource to you, just reach out and let us know what you need. In the meantime though, I'm gonna enjoy nature and virtually hope you guys get the chance to do the same with this video. Have a great rest of your time. See you again.